Okay, uh, let us get started. We have the common source amplifier and what we did yesterday was to add the capacitors that are there that are present in such an amplifier and they can be due to the MOS transistor and they can be due to wires that connect everything to everything else, right. So, now in the MOS transistor itself mainly in the saturation region there is some capacitance between gate and source and the one between gate and drain can be roughly assumed to be 0. But of course, you have these overlap regions and so on. So, there are these uh, capacitors that are formed between any pair of conductors. So, that will be there. Uh, that is one thing and then also the load can have capacitance and so on. So, finally, in the circuit it turns out that you will have capacitances between all three, uh, you have three terminals of the MOSFET between every pair of terminals there is a capacitance. Okay. Now, we already analyzed the case where we had a capacitance between gate and source and also between drain and source. There we get a second order response and there are two poles and the pole frequencies are quite easily identifiable. What was the response when we did not have uh, CGD? CGD equal to 0. What was the uh, response we had? Yeah. What was in the denominator? CGS, RS and 1 plus S CLRL. Now, it is a second order system, but it is a second order thing that can be factorized into two first order forms like this. Essentially, it is a cascade of two first order systems. Okay? So, we have this part and that part separately. So, the pole frequencies are also easy to identify. Why do we get this uh, CGS RS? That is because of this particular network. So, you look at CGS, the resistance that appears across it is uh, RS. So, the time constant is CGS RS or the corresponding pole frequency is 1 over uh, CGS RS. The pole frequency is at minus 1 over CGS RS. Okay? Uh, similarly, across uh, CL you have RL and so on. Okay? But when you do have the CGD, we still have a second order system, but things are not decoupled like the way they were earlier. Okay? It is not you cannot identify a first order system followed by another first order system. Everything is tied together. Okay? But it is still a second order system because we can only have two independent state variables here. Once you fix the voltage across let us say CGS and CL, the voltage across CGD is automatically fixed. So, although there are three capacitors, it is a second order system. Okay? So, what is uh, V naught by V i in this case? Please give me the answer. S C G D? Huh. Okay. Okay. S square. What is it? C G D square. No. I do not think so. The CGD square term will not come. Yeah. CGD, CGS plus CGS CL plus CL CGD. Okay. Actually, yeah. So, uh, it turns out that this kind of expression you see in many cases where you have this loop of capacitors, it is the you take every pair and then do the product and you get the sum of those things. Okay? Then what is the coefficient of S? C L plus C G D times G S. Okay? C L plus CGD GS plus CGS plus CGD times GL minus plus there is no minus okay, plus CGD GM that is all okay, plus GS GL. Okay. So, this appears correct. <laughs> so, what is the sanity check? Huh? Units, yeah, for sure, yeah. 
that's correct thankfully yeah all capacitor zero what do you get minus gm gs by gs gl so minus gm by gl or minus gm rl that's correct and then what else could you use on cgd is zero you can also check so you will only have cgs uh, cl here and then uh, clgs and this one so that you can factor out that also you can check okay this expression seems uh, fine so it is of course a second order expression as you expected and also it has a zero right uh, it has two poles and how many zeros one zero well, what is the frequency of the zero let's get it what is the frequency of the zero gm by gm by cgd okay so is it plus gm by cgd or minus plus yeah it's in the right of line yes so let me rewrite that Okay, so please catch the frequency response of this. Where are the poles? Huh? I mean, where do we move forward from here? How do I find the roots? Huh? Yeah, do it. <laughs> All you have to do is do minus b plus minus square root b square minus four ac by two a, right? <laughs> huh? I mean, the values. Uh, that won't be applicable in general, right? You won't get any insight out of them. You will find that, yeah, for those values, you can solve it. What do you do? Huh? No, no, that's okay. Do it. <laughs> Again, uh, you will still have to calculate whatever it is, right? Omega n will be square root of what? C by C by A. If it is A square plus B square plus the C, it is square root of C by A and the square root of A B by A C by B. So again, you will have a problem. Okay. So obviously, I mean, there is no way we can even start down that route, right? Even if you write it down, I don't know if I can write it down this full page, but uh, even if you do, it's useless. Okay. But uh, we will make some approximations. In it's also in anticipation of what we want to have. Okay. So. Let us say that you had a quadratic equation a x square plus b x plus c and of course you have to solve for the roots, but let us say the roots are real and the magnitudes are very different from each other. Can you suggest some approximation? I mean first of all you understand what I am saying the roots can be uh, real or complex conjugate. If they are complex conjugate obviously their magnitudes are equal to each other right they are uh, conjugates. So, what I am saying does not even apply, okay. So, let us say roots are real and the uh, uh, poles are uh, sorry the roots are uh, very far from each other, okay. Uh, why? How did you? Yeah. So, you can uh, assume you can you know what is the sum of roots and if one is much more than the other you can assume that the sum is just that one bigger one, okay. Things like that or another way to think about it is. Uh, let us say the roots are such that the two roots are such that so let us say this is one of the cases okay and it will turn out to be this if the roots are uh, far from each other okay so then what is the what approximation can you use obviously in this particular case in the first case the first case refers to the smaller of the roots right obviously 
So, then we say that b times p 1 plus c is approximately 0, they you neglect a times p 1 square in comparison to those. And similarly, in the other case a p 2 square plus b times p 2 is approximately 0. So, what are the values of the roots you get? Then you can do this small and large, okay. So, that is P1 is much smaller than P2. Is this is okay, and I mean, you can also there are many ways you can derive this, okay. You can write down the expression for the roots, which is minus b plus minus square root of b square minus 4ac by. 2a and if the roots are real of course, this will be positive, but you can uh, assume that you can take b outside and assume that the other term is small and use the binomial uh, expression for the square root that is 1 plus x square root of that is 1 plus x by 2 and so on. You will get a similar answer or like I said you know that the sum of the roots what is the sum of the roots of the quadratic minus b by a okay? and the product C by, a. C by a. Okay, so first you assume that the sum equals the one with the larger magnitude. Okay, and then from the product you can calculate the other one. You know, all of these will give you the same thing. Okay, so from this first one, the smaller magnitude root is what is it? minus c by a, c by b sorry, c by b and then uh, the larger one is minus b by a. This is okay, convincing. Now, after you do this, you have to go back and verify what? Huh? Yeah, so you have to go back and check whether p 2 is in fact much more than p 1. If you make this approximation and find that they are two are close to each other, the approximation was bad in the first place. Okay, so this is not a general solution, but this is an approximate thing. But it at least lets us go forwards. Okay, and in many cases you can use this. This is okay. So now please evaluate the roots for. Uh, please evaluate the two roots. I think this at least is possible, right? For the denominator we have. So, if you use the approximation for widely separated roots, what do we get? P 1, what is it? The smaller of the roots minus G S G L divided by C G C G D times G L plus C L plus C G D times G S plus C G D times G M and P 2 this whole thing Okay. So, we can calculate this, but of course, the more important thing is to make sense of this. Okay. Otherwise, I mean what is the big deal if you did have the numerical values, you could even find the exact roots. Okay. So, this will have a bearing on uh, what effect each component will have, uh, you have to that is why I understand these things properly. 
and also later it turns out that when we come to the op amp or some other ways it also tells us some ways of uh, uh, designing effective circuits which will be stable ok. So, before I go there let me get back to the original the first case we analyzed without CGD ok. So, where was P 1? It was minus G s by this is C G s C G s and P 2 minus G L by C L is this correct? Yeah. ok. So, why do we get these values of poles? What is that? Capacitance are negligible. No. What capacitance is negligible? I mean, I have put it there. Right? No, the values of the poles, I mean, is there some, you have some expression G s by C G s. Why do we get that? Yeah. So, in the circuit, we have a conductance G s and across that we have a resistance, sorry, capacitance C G s, ok. Those two together will give you this particular pole. So, it is a first order system in this case, I mean these two are isolated, this is a first order system and that is another first order system and in each one there is a conductance and across that there is a capacitance. So, the conductance divided by capacitance is the pole frequency ok or the negative of that ok. And since this is the input node and this is the output node sometimes I mean this is called the pole at the input and this is the output pole ok. So, in this case things are very simple there are two first order systems each first order system is formed because you have some conductance and some with uh, some capacitance across it and to find the pole frequency you have to divide the conductance by the capacitance is this ok. So, now let us see what happens when we do have C G D. So, this part is convincing right this circuit at least nobody should have any difficulty with C G D and we got the complicated expressions and even those were approximate. But let us say that I will still continue to interpret them in the same way that is there is a pole associated with the input node and there is another pole associated with the output node ok. So, what is the conductance that I see at the input node in this case conductance G s ok. So, the new value of the pole can it be written as minus G s divided by something what will that be? No, I mean you look at the previous expression and write it like this that is all ok. So, we have this expression this ok we got from some mathematical approximation, but let us say I write it as G s divided by something what will that be? You understand what I am trying to do. So, before the two parts the input and output were separated there is a conductance G s from the input node to ground conductance G l from the output node to ground and across G s we have a capacitance C G s across G l we have a capacitance C l and the two poles could be easily calculated G s by uh, C G s and G l by C l ok. So, look from looking at first order systems I have this idea that hey, I have to look for uh, some conductance and some capacitance across it and from that find the poles. Now, the with C G d the system is coupled ok. So, you cannot separate the two first order pieces anymore but I will still I still have this conductance G s from the input node to ground another conductance G l from output node to ground and I will continue to think of the input pole and the output pole. So, I will associate the input pole with this conductance G s and the output pole with whatever conductance I see between the output node and ground ok. So, I want to write it like that and see if the expression makes any sense at all ok. So, what do I get if I do that G s divided by we have C G s plus C G d what is the coefficient of C G d we get? Why? You 
this expression all i have to do is bring gl to the denominator so that goes away this by gl and this by gl so what is the coefficient of cgd 1 plus gm by gl plus g s by g l and then is that all what do we have plus c l times g s by g l ok. All I did was to rearrange the previous expression I divided the numerator and denominator by g l. So, that it appears like g s divided by some capacitance ok. The pole is some conductance by some capacitance. Here I have written it as G s divided by some capacitance just like I did I mean in case of uh, no C G D that was obvious it was G s divided by C G s. Now, it looks like G s divided by some capacitance ok. Now, the question is can you make sense of this capacitance that appears in the denominator. What do we see in the denominator? Yeah, what is that? C G S is in parallel with uh, G L. So, that is obviously there. So, we have C G S plus something ok. So, what is that plus something? Why do we get that? Yeah, it is the effective capacitance, but why is it the effective capacitance? added some capacitance to the circuit. So, something as a it is almost as though I mean we had G s by C G s earlier now across C G s we have all these extra terms. So, that means that some additional capacitance is present also between the input node and ground is this correct is that interpretation uh, ok fine. So, now what is the second term that we see C G d times 1 plus G m by G l or at least there are there any other recognizable terms in the denominator. Can you recognize any of the terms? Yeah, actually, last time was the hardest to interpret. Let us not go there. So, I mean, just some term, some term that I have asked you like 100 times before. What is this? Huh? Gain. It is the inverse of the, I mean, negative of the gain. Okay, why do we get it there? Any ideas? It looks like somehow C G D is multiplied by 1 plus gain, is not it? Huh? Yeah. So, imagine that ok now this is a this is an ideal amplifier of some gain minus a ok. Then you connect C G D across it ok and you apply a test voltage. What is the current that flows? This is ready. What is the current? What is the output voltage? Minus A times huh? V test yeah. So, what is the voltage across the capacitor? in that polarity 1 plus a times v test. So, what is the current flowing through the capacitor huh? into into s c g d ok I use Laplace variables it is the same thing. So, now so let us say you had to apply v test to a single element ok and this current should be the same as that current what would this be? So, let us say this was in a black box and I will make another black box with a single element inside no amplifier and so on. So, what should this element be? So, that the input current here and there are exactly the same. Yeah, what capacitor? 
Srinath. Huh? So, basically, if you look at it, V test by A test gives you some impedance, and that impedance is what you have to replace that with. And you will easily see that that is equal to a capacitor of value 1 plus A times C G D. Okay. So, if you have a capacitor, and I wrote minus A deliberately, assuming A is positive, if you have a inverting amplifier, what happens is that uh, let us say there is a small variation here on the other side on the at the output there is a big variation in the opposite phase ok. So, if you now connect an element across this the very large voltage is applied to the element ok. So, consequently a larger current flows ok. So, now uh, it basically reduces the impedance by fi that factor or increases the uh, admittance by the same factor ok. So, a small capacitor connected across an inverting amplifier with a large gain can appear like a very large capacitor ok. So, this is both a bug and a feature sometimes it is a problem sometimes we can use it for uh, whatever we want to do ok. So, what does this got to do with what we were doing here? So, you can we had the you can think of the common source amplifier before you connect C G D it has a gain minus G M by G L. Now, there is one important distinction here that will come in this when you write an amplifier like this you assume that it is a voltage controlled voltage source. So, that is the output voltage is not affected by what you connect to it ok. So, whatever you connect to it if I have uh, V test here I get minus A times V test there that is what is assumed I mean this is like the block diagrams and controls and so on you do not worry about loading and all those things right anything you put here or output you will be g times that ok. Now, our amplifier is definitely not like that right our amplifier is not a voltage controlled voltage source it is a voltage controlled current source loaded by a resistor. So, the gain will be affected by what you connect to it, but it turns out that I will again tie all the approximations together for this particular approximation that does not matter ok. So, we had an amplifier of gain minus g m by g l and you connect C G D across it that is between its input and output. So, at the input node or between the input node and ground it looks like a capacitance of C G D times 1 plus the gain magnitude or 1 plus G M R L ok. Is this convincing or? So, in general If you have some impedance z and this is minus a only as far as the input current is concerned this can be replaced by what z divided by 1 plus a. So, if it is a resistance its value reduces and if it is a capacitance then its value increases. So, this will be equivalent to again this is equivalent only for uh, the input current ok. And this effect is known as Miller effect I think after the first person who analyzed or described it and it can be a sometimes a big problem ok. Because I told you I mean in this case I will tell you why that is a problem I told you that C G D is very small, but it could be small, but it can still have a big uh, effect on the circuit because C G D it is not between some node and ground it is between the gate and drain of the uh, transistor and in the common source amplifier configuration the gate is the input node drain is the output node and you could have pretty high gain for the amplifier. So, although the value of C G D is small it is effective capacitance seen from the input side can be pretty large if you design a high gain amplifier. Okay. Yes. Now, what I mean is that uh, so this is an amplifier of uh, gain minus A. So that means that if I apply V test here, I get minus A times V test here. And normally, when I write a block diagram like this, I assume that this will remain minus A times V test regardless of what I connect. Okay. And that's not true of the common source amplifier. Okay, because how do you get uh, if I do not have this 
when do you get minus GMRL when the CL is not there and all of this current is going into that one ok. So, if you do connect something to it and that draws current then all of this GM VGS will not flow into that ok. So, it will affect the game, but that is something we can safely ignore for this purpose ok. This is one of the reasons I keep saying that uh, exact calculations are easier than uh, approximate ones ok. Exact calculation meaning ok you throw uh, all, uh, all the number if you do have all the numbers you throw everything into the formula and you calculate that is all that is there to it. But then you do not get any insight and you cannot go forward from there and for every problem is different now ok. Approximations uh, it looks like hey I omitted some pieces, but the point is you have to know what to approximate when right. So, that is actually more important than the calculation itself. The calculations becomes easier, but the harder part is to figure out what to approximate in what context the limits of the approximation and so on ok. So, and, and it is extremely important to be able to approximate properly to do any design or in general to understand any subject properly ok, because you cannot go into uh, very complex numerical calculations right at the beginning. If you do that. I mean you can probably carry it out if you have all the numbers just like this uh, roots of this quadratic equation right. If I gave you all the uh, component values you can calculate the roots, but then what you cannot do anything else. I mean you would not be able to see the patterns like which way to change things if you want the pole to move this way or that way or whatever it is ok. Yeah. Uh, well that is uh, that is something I pulled out of thin air at least in those conditions I can make this approximation if it is not I cannot and there is no guarantee that that will be the case ok. Now, that will be the case in fact, that will turn out to be the case in feedback networks we do want things to be that way ok. But uh, right now just as far as an amplifier is concerned it does not have to be because the value of CGD I mean we do not know nothing right. So, I will show you later that uh, the depending on the value of CGD you could have uh, all kinds of uh, root values and there is no guarantee that it will be far away, but the only thing we can reasonably calculate is when they are far away. So, we will do that ok. Yeah, clearly not why is that that is a good point right. When CGD is 0 we do not get GS by CGS why is that this is approximated in the first place right. This is not the root this is the uh, we assume that first order expression is not it using saying that this root is minus c by a uh, c by b that is approximate to begin with. So, that is why we get this ok. If c g d is 0 yeah surely right c g d is 0 it does not make any sense to use this approximation ok. No, but I mean is it the value of c g d that matters here into 1 plus gm by gl. So, it could be that uh, CGD itself is small, but CGD times 1 plus gm by gl is significant and even the dominant one ok that is possible. So, this is a very crude approximation I mean depending on the uh, component values it could be completely invalid also, but at least in this case we can get some insight into what is going on ok. First of all clearly there is some values where it will be valid ok. C G D is very large it will be valid right we will see that ok. If C G D is very large I will show you that in fact, the poles will be far apart from each other. So, that is why you have to remember every approximation we made along the way and see which ones are valid and which ones are not, but clearly in this case if you put C G D equal to 0 and try to do sanity check you will find yourself insane ok that is uh, <laughs> clearly that is not going to work ok. So, the point I was trying to make was that I will still treat it as GS in parallel with some capacitance. What is that capacitance? First of all, CGS is directly connected there. So, that had better appear directly and it does ok plus something. What is that something? The CGD times 1 plus GM by GL and there is some physical explanation for it. Why does it happen? If you if the voltage here wiggles by a little bit the other one wiggles by a lot and this draws a lot of current and that is equivalent to having a large capacitor there ok. So, this part is also explained. Now, this part again first of all this itself is an approximate expression and this is not a significant piece ok. When in an amplifier gm is much more than gl, but uh, gs and gl could be of the same order and so on. So, I will ignore that part and move on ok. 
the main thing was to try and at least make sense of the expressions and see which way things go ok. So, now uh, so let us start with the case with no CGD and then you introduce CGD ok and there is some pole associated with the input node. So, when you go from no CGD to having some CGD does the pole move to lower frequencies or higher frequencies? Huh? Lower frequencies is that correct? I mean look at the expression what is the difficulty here? This is the old one this is the new one which is bigger. Huh? it moves to lower frequencies right because there is it appears that there is some additional capacitance ok. So, the key was to interpret both of them as uh, I mean with CGD and without CGD both as conductance by capacitance at the input node when I say at the input node between the input node and ground and there is some reasonable explanation for it ok. The meaning of it is more important than the approximation, the approximation will not be valid for certain values of CGD for sure ok. Any questions about this? Again please spend time on the uh, approximation and in case of this you have to spend time thinking about which is valid and which is not and so on. The calculation itself is trivial ok. Any questions about any of this? CGD and CL I scaled by something I mean merely because it is plus you cannot uh, because I can always the CGD appears in other places also right. So, you cannot say that. Any questions about this thing? Why do we? Because I do not know what its meaning is <laughs> see it is likely to be not a significant term ok. This G S by G L will be usually G S and G L will be of similar order and so on ok. And I also know that this expression itself is approximate in some way and finally, I do not know how to interpret it. So, that is the bottom line ok. So, now is it ok? In fact, uh, if you deliberately add some C G D or if the C G D value itself is comparable to C G S let us say for whatever reason, then the most dominant term is this one right all the others can be neglected probably is not it. If uh, C G S and C G D are comparable then all those others are not multiplied by gain assuming that you have a high gain amplifier only this is the significant one. So, in case of a high gain amplifier you can neglect everything else also ok. So, this approximation is not valid for all values of CGD. You can always find a sufficiently small value of CGD where this whole thing breaks down. Okay, all you have to do is make uh, CGD by CGS less than one by gain or something. But uh, it is useful for some range, and that's what we are uh, after. Okay. Any questions about any of this? Okay. So now, with this experience, can you take a crack at what happens to P2? P2 again we will interpret it as conductance between uh, conductance at the output node divided by the capacitance at the output node. So, before you do anything else tell me which way will P2 move to lower frequencies or higher frequencies. Huh? So, the I mean ok I did not even ask the question completely. So, between CGD being 0 and after adding CGD. So, before you add CGD this is the pole associated with the output node after you add CGD will it move to lower frequencies or higher frequencies. Higher, why? No, why? There is no such uh, rule. I mean, I could add a capacitance here between these two nodes, and the other one won't move at all, right? So anyway, what is the expression for uh, P two? The old one was, of course, minus GL by CL. What is the new expression? Okay. 
okay yeah so this is fine what do i do going forward can you the point is i mean when you have a number of terms in the expression i can always divide something i mean do divide the numerator and denominator by something and get it into different forms but the useful form is to find something where you can identify some physical conductance and capacitance at the output node okay can you identify something split into yeah but uh, how will that help so first of all this strictly is i mean the numerator is conductance times capacitance and denominator is capacitance squared okay so let me try to fix that situation and i will divide both numerator and denominator by this one okay cgs plus cgd what will i get correct i took that previous expression divided both numerator and denominator by cgs plus cgd okay now clearly the numerator has dimensions of uh, conductance the denominator has dimensions of capacitance okay so first let's start with the denominator which is the easier part the denominator is supposed to be some capacitance but what is that what does it represent that expression i mean let's say you had to make a capacitance which comes up with this capacitance value what would that be as yes, money what is that cgs and series with cgd and then the whole thing in parallel with cl okay so this represents the capacitance of cgd cgs cl so if you look between these two terminals you will see that capacitance but is there such a network in our circuit where is that as seen the where the pointing fingers <laughs> yeah so between the output node you do see that right because uh, you have cl so between these two terminals okay in fact I, that's why i already uh, prepared the ground by saying i'll call this the output node it's between the output uh, node and ground and so on so between the output node and ground i have cl appearing directly and then cgd and cgs in series They're not exactly in series in that there are other components connected but at least you see this network okay if gs was let's say very very small or zero then you could see this exactly isn't it so this also makes sense the whole point is to prove that everything makes sense if you stare hard enough okay is this okay so this represents a parallel connection of cl uh, cl in parallel with a series combination of cgs and cgd and it's no mystery that that appears because that network very much is there in our amplifier okay so we have cl here and cgs and cgd there okay now the numerator is then uh, so this is in fact the what is in the denominator is in fact the capacitance between the output node and ground okay so what's the numerator that seems to have changed more significantly before what did we have in the numerator without without cgd g gl not gs gl by cl okay so cl has changed to this that makes sense because of cgd we have another parallel element and that is got added gl has changed to this whole mess so what is that ha huh? neglect <laughs> which is the most significant one here in the numerator which is most likely to be gl gm right what is the relative values of gm compared to gs or gl which will be more gm will be more it's an amplifier okay so you will neglect the most significant term then obviously you will get the wrong answer now. yes so first of all has the pool moved to higher or lower frequencies i mean just give me some uh, 
Numerator has changed, denominator has changed. Which one do you think has changed more significantly? Numerator. GM can be much more than GL, right? So, the numerator has changed and the pole has moved to higher frequencies. Okay. So, your contrarian answer was uh, correct. <laughs> so, what is the interpretation now? We have GL. Okay. Thankfully, if that was not there, then we would, I would have some serious explaining to do. But uh, GL is there because it appears between the output node and ground. But in addition to that, I have these conductances. Again, some of that can be blamed on the approximation, but certainly not this. How would I get a conductance like that? GM times CGD by CGS plus CGD. Okay. So, what is GM? What kind of an element is it? Yes. What is GM? It is a voltage controlled current source. So, now how can you get a conductance using a voltage controlled current source? Is it possible? I give you a voltage controlled current source. I want you to make a resistor out of it. Can you do it? How will you do it? Huh? What is that? I mean, obviously, without using a resistor. <laughs> Hey, this we have done so many times in EMC and even here I think. If this is Vx and this is Gm Vx, first of all can you give me a resistor of value? I want a two terminal element inside a black box and I want you to use this inside the black box. Can you give me a two terminal element of uh, resistance 1 by Gm? How would I do that? This is very easy right? The control source is a more universal element, I mean more versatile thing than a resistor. A resistor has only two terminals, the current flowing from one terminal to other is proportional to the voltage across the same two terminals. Whereas, here the terminals are separated. So, if you want to make them the same, all you have to do is do that. Okay. So, then the conductance between these two terminals is Gm. Okay. Is this fine? Yes or no? So, this should be very easy. So, now let us say I have a slightly harder problem for you. So, I want the conductance to be not G m. So, let us say this is 1 and 1 prime. I want the conductance to be not G m, but alpha times G m. How could you do this? So, let us say alpha is less than 1, it does not matter, but so the current should flow in the resistor. Okay. So, the current flows in the control source. So, those are the terminals of the resistor and that should be what is the current that should flow if I apply some V here or if I apply 1 volt should be alpha times G m. Okay. So, that means that what should be V x? Alpha if this is V test what should be V x? Alpha? Alpha times V test. So, if V x equals alpha times V test, then the current will be drawn. So, you applied a voltage V test across it. The current that flows will be alpha G m times V test. So, if this was in a black box, you would think that this is a resistance whose value is or the conductance whose value is alpha times G m. Is that correct? So, previously when we connected uh, together, the entire V test was applied as, as V x. Now, only a fraction of it or some multiple of it is applied and the conductance will get multiplied by the same number. Okay. Is this fine? So, you can of course, make a resistor using essentially you are using feedback around a voltage control current source to realize a resistor and you can do exactly the same thing with a current control voltage source also. Okay. So, getting back to our problem. So, first of all, if you had a voltage controlled current source whose uh, proportionality constant was G m, how would you get a conductance whose value is this? Capacitive divider. So, you have to have this alpha which is C G D times C G S plus C G D by C G S plus C G D and do we have, where do you get such an expression? Alpha should be C G D by C G S plus C G D. What kind of circuit will give me that one? So, yeah, I will continue from here, but you can see that when C G D was not there, 
okay the controlling side of this gm and control side are completely separate okay certainly the output is not connected to the input now what happens is there is feedback the ccd is not merely some capacitance that is extra capacitance that's added it's connecting the output to the input and the attenuation from here to there is ccd by ccs plus ccd okay so please think about all these things we will continue this uh, tomorrow